So, dear brothers uh, and sisters uh, in Christ, uh, we thank our Lord for giving uh, it another opportunity to uh, see his wonderful words of life. Uh, and uh, last week, uh, we studied about an uh, important uh, part uh, about the three ways where we saw how God had made a plan for the whole mankind, where originally mankind uh, walked on the broad way and uh, when there was no way of escape except the law, God uh, sent his son Jesus and opened the Nineveh to eternal immortal life for the heavenly salvation. But we also saw that uh, not everybody could attain the heavenly salvation. Therefore, God knowing that one, at the return of our Lord uh, second coming, he is going to open a highway of holiness for the rest of the mankind to walk in his kingdom. Today, we are going to see a very important subject. God originally created man in his own image and gave him the dominion of the entire earth to have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air and over all the cattle. So, hence if you see, Adam was made as a king of this earth. So let us read that verse in Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. Can any of the brother uh, read, brother? read, Daniel, brother. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creep, creepeth upon the earth. You see, so he was made to have dominion. That means kingship was given to Adam. He was crowned with, uh, you see, authority of this entire earth. Hence, uh, he was the first king of this earth. Dear brethren, the Garden of Eden was his kingdom. The entire earth was his dominion. Let us read in Psalms 8, chapter verse 4 and 5 also. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited, visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Mm. Continue. Oh, I think you can open the Bible and read. Continue. Or else somebody can read. Go on, brother. You can continue verse uh, from where, brother, stop. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Seven also, brother. Mm, continue, continue. Mm. All steeps and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fall of the air, uh, and the fish of the sea, and whosoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Okay, thank you. So, here if you see, it clearly says that Adam was crowned to be the king of this uh, earth. So, that was the first kingdom which God had established on this earth. But when Adam, you see, sinned against God, you see, when God told him not to eat of the forbidden fruit, God uh, put him into a test in the Garden of Eden. But, uh, you see, what God told not to do, Eve and uh, Adam ate the forbidden fruit. So hence, uh, Sin and death, uh, you see, entered uh, into this world. It was uh, through this one man sin that uh, sin entered into the world. And Adam, because of the sin, lost the kingship of this world. Instead of being a king, he became a slave. Slave for what, if you see? Slave for sin. Slave for all mankind. Therefore, dear brother, the kingdom which God had typically established on earth ceased to be there. You see, Adam lost the kingdom. 
instead of being a king he himself became a servant for sin therefore he was cast out into the cursed ground you see god told him that uh, cursed is the ground for thy sake so dear brethren therefore if you say adam lost his kingdom there so the kingdom of god which god had first established in the garden of eden ceased to be but since then the lot of other kingdoms uh, you see that have come and nearly after 2000 years uh, that god had established a kingdom in israel you see and uh, many kings uh, came and ruled uh, in israel and especially when solomon sat uh, on the throne and ruled it is said that solomon sat on the throne of the lord and ruled so let us read uh, first chronicles 29:23 uh, brother joel can you read first chronicles 29:23 then solomon sat on the throne of the lord as king instead of david his father and prosper and all israel over him aha uh -huh. you see solomon sat on the throne of the lord you see not on throne of david why it says so because god kingdom was typically established after the garden of eden in israel therefore you see dear brethren there were nearly 21 kings in king of israel many kings ruled but for the last king god commanded to take off his crown and take off his royal diadem you see and uh, he was uh, supposed to be cast out uh, until the second coming of our lord jesus unto whom the kingdom shall be given back so let us read ezekiel 21st chapter 25 to 27 brother ezekiel 25th 25th 21st chapter 25 to 27 uh munna ah uh, go brother read 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 go brother and the prophet a uh, wicked prince of israel whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end thus said the lord god remove the diadem and take off the crown this shall not be the same exalt him that is low and abase him that is high i will overturn 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 it and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is and i will give it him see the wicked king was uh, oh, thrown out uh, and god removed his uh, kingship his crown was taken off his royal diadem was taken off that means the typical kingdom which god had established god uh, began to you see take it from israel so the kingdom which god had established in israel it ceased to be dear brethren it says it shall be given back to him whose right actually it is and that is our lord jesus christ not at the first advent but our first second advent therefore dear brethren after that one there are many kingdoms that have come the kingdom of assyrians the egyptians many have ruled but none of these kingdoms are the kingdoms of god but these are all the kingdoms of this world you see therefore today brethren we are going to see today's headlines written 2500 years before more than that one dear brethren we are going to see today's headlines today what we are seeing Ah, uh, the world is moving ahead for the third world war. So the fictions, uh, you see, are fastly getting compiled. Uh, you see, and moving towards Armageddon. Dear brethren, this is shown to us in the dream which uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, saw. Nebuchadnezzar was much worried, and he was uh, sleeping, thinking about uh, what is going to happen. to his kingdom and next who is going to come and rule after him and it is all given to us in very detailed manner in daniel second chapter i request everybody to read you see uh, this uh, second chapter after the class so dear brethren as uh, the king was sleeping he saw a dream 
because of the dream he was very much uh, disturbed devadan and uh, early in the morning as soon as he wake up you called all the wise men the soothsayers the astrologers uh, the wise men you see all the people you see of this uh, kingdom and told him in the night uh, i saw a dream uh, because of which i am very much disturbed so i want you to please uh, you see uh, tell me the meaning of the dream then uh, all the people said uh, you see the soothsayers uh, the astrologers uh, Uh, you see, everybody is told, "O oh, king, why are you much worried? Please tell us the dream. We will tell you the interpretation thereof." But you know, the king told, "No, I have forgotten the dream." So anybody telling me, they should tell the dream as well as the interpretation by which I will come to know whether you are telling the truth or not. As soon as uh, you see, king told this one, all the soothsayers, wise men, and the you see, astrologers told. O oh, king, there is no king who has ever asked uh, such type of question, and there is no man that who can answer the king's question. You see, and uh, immediately the king was very very angry. Immediately he gave a commandment saying that uh, all the soothsayers, all the wise men, you see, should be slain in his kingdom. And taking his command, taking his degree, you see, the Babylonian, uh, uh, you see. Uh, Uh, centurion a uh, chief of the soldiers uh, the captain of the soldiers uh, he went around uh, and seeking and uh, bring all the wise men to be slaughtered similarly they also went uh, to you see pick up uh, daniel and his friends uh, because they were also one of the wise men of the kingdom then daniel was so shocked at uh, to know that why the king has given such a command and immediately Daniel request the king saying, "Please give us one day. We will tell the dream as well as the meaning thereof." And that night, dear brethren, when Daniel and all his friends were asleep, you see, they all you see pray to the Lord, and uh, the Lord, you see, that night revealed to him what actually the king saw. Therefore, dear brethren, uh, as uh, Daniel was sleeping, same dream. But actually, uh, King Sir uh, was uh, revealed to Daniel, and immediately in the morning, uh, the King uh, in the King's presence, Daniel and his friends uh, came and told, "Well, O oh, King, when uh, uh, thou art much worried about what is going to happen in the future, when you were uh, perplexed and asleep." that is the time that god has shown this dream to you and in the dream you saw a vision in the vision you saw a you see multi metallic uh, uh, structure and that uh, multi metallic uh, image statue was uh, made out of uh, four types of metal the head was made of gold the arms uh, and uh, you see the shoulders uh, were more made of uh, uh, silver the thigh and the uh, you see and the belly were made of uh, brass and the legs uh, were made out of iron but uh, the feet of it was a mixture of uh, iron and clay and as you were seeing and appreciating this uh, statue a stone which was untouched by human hands began to come and uh, hit the image at the feet and pound the image into pieces uh, in such a way that uh, it became a dust uh, and uh, you see on the floor uh, uh, and immediately a great wind blew of the structure in such a way that there was no clue left of that uh, to see statue at all and as you were seeing the stone which pound the image slowly began to grow to such an extent that it covered the entire earth you see dear brethren so as soon as daniel clearly explained the same way as king saw the dream king was so happy you see dear brethren the king you see got a conviction in his heart to think that daniel would surely tell 
uh, interpretation and correctly you would tell you tell the truth you see dear brethren and uh, yeah, daniel continues to tell the interpretation what did daniel say let us read daniel second chapter 37 and 38 brother daniel 2 37 and 38 uh, Munna sister, can you read? Is it possible for you to read? Uh, sister Munna? Yes, brother. Okay, thank you, sister. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field, and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into the thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art his head of gold. See, he says... The God of heaven has given them, given you the kingdom, power and strength to rule over all the beasts and all the fowls of the air. And thou art that uh, head of gold. Dear brethren, if you clearly observe uh, these words, uh, you see, it is the same words uh, which God had told to Adam. You see, we read in Genesis 126 and Psalm 8, chapter 4 to 7. Where God tells that uh, the dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air is given to you. The same words are used here. That means that here God gave the dominion, uh, you see, to Babylonian Empire. And uh, the Babylon Empire was a universal empire, dear brethren. So therefore, you see, uh, he was the first uh, to rule on this earth among the Gentile kingdoms. The next, uh, after him, what would happen? You see, Daniel continues to tell the one. Let us read verse 39 and 40. Verse 39 and verse 40. Can you continue, sister? And after thee shall arise another kingdom, kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear be a rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all this shall it break it, break in pieces and bruise. See, so the kingdom that shall come after you shall be inferior to you, and that is shown in the arms and shoulder of silver and the third kingdom that is going to come after you it will be still much inferior and that is shown in the you see belly and thigh of brass and the fourth kingdom you see which will be like a iron you see so daniel continues to sell that you see these are the fourth kingdom that is going to come after you so, here, uh, dear brethren, he tells that the fourth, uh, you see, the kingdom, uh, which was uh, iron, it was a mixed uh, kingdom. That means, uh, you see, the legs of iron were mixed with clay. So, what does Daniel tell about that one? Let us read Daniel 2, verse 41 to 43, brother. Daniel 2, 41 to 43. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, par part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and a part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not clave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Uh -huh. See, Daniel clearly it says that uh, as you saw that the fourth kingdom was mixed uh, kingdom, so as iron cannot mix with clay. So similarly, this shall be a mixture of uh, two kingdoms, uh, but one shall be strong and one shall be, you see, 
partly strong and as iron and clay doesn't mix together similarly these kingdom shall not mix together and in these days of the kingdom you see the god of heaven shall establish his kingdom and he shall destroy everything as you saw a stone uh, cut out of the mountains without uh, human hands it came and hit the image at the feet so similarly god shall establish his kingdom and he shall destroy all other kingdom and he shall rule forever and ever read verse 44 brother verse 44 and in the days of this king shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to all the people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever see it shall stand for ever see dear brethren as soon as uh, you see the interpretation was told to the king the king was so happy that uh, he came and fell uh, prostrate uh, before daniel and honored him with uh, very very costly gifts uh, and gold and all dear brethren but anyway if we come to the understanding of this uh, you see uh, the statue the structure the multi metallic uh, statue here it is actually speaking about the four universal empire that rule on this earth not uh, any small empires so if you see in the world history the four universal empires uh, that rule was babylon medo persia then greece and last was rome okay but do we have a clue of this one in the bible yes the bible itself tells us the that the first kingdom was Babylon. Let us read in Daniel 2.38, brother. Can anybody read Daniel 2.38? And whosoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fall of the heaven hath he given into thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Uh, thou art this head of gold means the first uh, empire was the Babylonian empire. Dear brethren, the Bible itself gives us a clue. For the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. Any questions you have, we need to seek the answer from the Bible. So the first uh, universal empire was Babylon that ruled from 606 BC to 538 BC. This is the head of gold. You see, as gold is a very costly metal, dear brethren, huh? Babylon was uh, very, very, you see, rich in gold. You also see in the Bible, no? they use golden statues. Sir. So next uh, empire that ruled after Babylon was a little bit inferior to Babylon, and that was compared to silver, having two arms and shoulders. Sir. So this is the Medo-Persian Empire. It was a combination of two empires who ruled together, the Medians and the Persians. They ruled from 538 BC to 331 BC. And the third empire was uh, like the belly and thigh of brass. And this was the Grecian Empire, you see, who ruled from 331 BC to 160 BC. And the fourth empire was like uh, iron means that represents the Roman Empire who ruled for the rule for the more and a much longer period compared to all others. It was 160 BC to 470 AD. Remember, when our Lord was born, it was the Roman Empire that was ruled. That means he was ruling almost at the fourth part. Anyway, here if you see the value of metals are slowly decreasing, but uh, the strength of the metal is increasing. So what does this signify? This shows that uh, as the, you see, the emperors changed, as there was a different empire who ruled, there the human values were suppressed. There was no value for any humans. You see, the, when you came to Roman Empire, there was no value for Romans at all. They were treated as slaves. That is when the slave trade began. But if you see, this rule was very ferocious to brethren. Compared to Babylon, the medio persians were much stronger. Compared to medio persians the Greece were stronger. And Rome was the strongest of all the uh, empire. 
Dear brethren, you see, huh? there in the feet, Daniel said that it was a mixture of uh, two powers. That means uh, iron mixed with clay. Now, what does this represent? You see, we all have seen clay now. Huh? Today, in these days, uh, I think clay is very less to be seen in this world. But uh, you see, this is clay and this is a stone. If you see, both are identical. You see, really can you find the differentiation? You see, the clay is actually uh, almost uh, like a stone, but not a stone. It is only a duplicate. You see, it's brittle. It's not so strong as a stone. So we can tell that clay is a duplicate uh, stone, counterfeit uh, stone. Okay. Now, what does the stone mean in the Bible? In 1 Peter 2 5, the true church is compared to a living stone. Uh, isn't it? Let us read. You see, 1 Peter 2 5. 1 Peter 2 5. Romy's brother, Romy brother or Romy sister, can you read 1 Peter 2 5? Is it okay? Yeah, also, as a lively stone are built up a spiritual house and holy holy pressed wood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Thank you, sir. You are a living stone. So the true church is the living stone. So the claim is what? Duplicate church. You no, know, you might tell what brother? Is there duplicate church? Is there a false church in the world? Yes. Not every Christians are true Christians, dear brethren. There are false Christians also in this world. We are going to study all those things in the coming days. But here it says that iron was mixed with the clay. Iron, we all know, it's a Roman Empire. The clay means the false church. So, which is the church which got mixed with the Roman Empire? If you see, that was the, you see, Catholic Church. Now, therefore, the name was given as Roman Catholic. Everybody might wonder how this name Roman Catholic came. This is how it came. Because Catholic Church got mixed with the Roman Empire. What happened? Roman Catholic came. See, it's given in the Bible only. Then, you might be also yeah, wondering, see, those who live in Rome, the Catholics who live in Rome, if they are called Roman Catholics, okay. Actually, the word Catholic is from Latin word. Catholic means universal. For the entire world, there was only one church, dear brethren. Therefore, the whole church in the world was called Catholic. So, universal, that word means. So, that church got mixed with the Roman Empire. It was called as Roman Catholic. Okay. But why are people living in India and Nepal are called as... Roman Catholic. They should be called as Indian Catholics or else they should be called as Nepalian, uh, Nepali Catholics. But why are they called as Roman Catholics? Because of this reason. Then. So, Daniel clearly said that uh, as uh, clay doesn't mix with iron, this will be very temporary. Similarly, the church and the, you see, and the state mixture is not permanent. It is only for mutual benefit. But there, Daniel, uh, also tells her that, uh, you see, in the days of this king, that means the kings are still there. In the feet, there were ten fingers. So, similarly, this uh, uh, Roman Empire is still been existing today in the ten different, uh, you see, countries of the European continent. There, Daniel saw that uh, a stone untouched with human hands came and hit the image. So, what does that represent, sir? That is the true church who is being developed in the kingdoms of this world, untouched with human hands. It is by God's Holy Spirit that the church is being developed. And uh, once the church is complete in the second coming of Jesus, Jesus is going to come and ponder this multi-metallic uh, worldly governments and he's going to destroy them. Today we can see that these things are happening in front of our eyes. This stone has come and is already started to hit uh, 
Hence, if you see in all the world, there is no complete power for any nation or any country. Every country is weak. Every country, there is a lot of trouble. Why? Because the Lord is smiting them. Read Psalm 110, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 110, verse 5 and 6. Kamal, Kamala Rana Magar. Can you read, sister? Kamala, sister, can you read? Okay. He's Brother Kamal. Okay. Brother Kamal. Kamal, brother, can you read? Okay. Shazan, brother, can you read? Shazan. Okay. Okay. Anybody else can read? Not a issue. Okay. Uh, the Lord at hmm. a uh, right, right hand hmm. shall strike through kings in the day of his word. He shall judge among the heathen, heathen and he, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall want the heads over many countries. See, he shall, uh, you see, judge among the heathens. He shall smite the head over many countries, uh, dear brethren. He shall uh, strike through the kings, uh, dear brethren. So this is what we are saying. But shortly, in the coming great time of trouble, this entire kingdoms of this world shall be made into a fine powder. And what will happen? This will be completely blown away. That, uh, after this one, the stone which uh, hit began to grow slowly and covered the entire earth. Similarly, God's kingdom is going to cover the entire earth. This is going to be the fifth universal empire, dear brethren. After this four universal empire, the fifth universal empire is going to be the Christ kingdom on this earth. Okay. Now the same dream is shown again to Daniel in seventh chapter also. So I request everybody to kindly read this one in your house in seven, about seven chapter. The same word God has shown in second chapter is again shown to Daniel in seventh chapter. In the Daniel 7 chapter, Daniel sees a four different beast coming out of the sea. Let us read those verse. Uh, Daniel 7 chapter, brother, verse 2 and 3. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four wings of the heaven strove up the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. You see, four uh, beasts came from the sea. One was different from the other. Now was the first beast. Read verse 4 with her. The first was like a lion and had eagle wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made it stand up on the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Ah, the first beat was like a lion, it seems. It had eagle's wing, it seems. Uh -huh. Okay, now let us come to the second beast. Uh, verse uh, 5, brother. Uh. And behold, another beast, a second like a bear, and it raised up itself, on one side, and it had three reeds in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Uh -huh. The second beast was like a bear, it seems. One shoulder was up, other shoulder was down, it seems. What is the meaning of this one? You see? Let us see. And how is the third beast? Verse 6, brother. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Ah, the fourth beast was like a leopard. You see, it had four heads, it seems. 
and four wings of a bird was given to him. Uh, let us read up the fourth beast, verse 7 to 8. Uh, after this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break, it, break in pieces and stamped the residue over the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men, and a mouth speaking great things. Thank you, brother. So, the fourth beast, no name was given. But it was told it was very ferocious, a very terrible and dreadful beast. And it was different when compared to all the other beasts. What was the difference? It had ten horns on the head, it seems to be. You see, and the speciality was that the three horns fell, making way for a little horn to come in between each himself. And how was the little horn? If you see, the little horn was so special that it had a mouth of a man, the eyes of a man. You see, dear brother, it spoke boastful things, it seems. You see, this is the fourth beast. Dear brethren, the same thing what we saw in Daniel second chapter is again repeated in Daniel eh? seven chapter. Everything is the parallel, dear brethren. The same thing. Then why did God give the same thing in a different angle? Because there are two perspectives of the same picture. You see, dear brethren, Nebuchadnezzar king saw this beautiful multi-metallic structure and appreciated it. Similarly, today, world history is being appreciated by human beings. They read in the school history and say, wow, wonderfully our kings have ruled this earth. But the same ruling in the sight of God is very beasty, very bloody. Because they spoiled so many families, made so many children fatherless, homeless, many widows. How much of crying, weeping, dear brethren, all these nations in the sight of God are ferocious beasts. And the second chapter is same as seventh chapter, brother. See here, the head of gold, here, and that shows the Babylon Empire. Here it is shown by lion. Why lion? You tell me, what is the meaning of lion? Lion is uh, what? You studied in the school, no? Lion is dash of the jungle. Tell me, what king. is of the jungle? King, king. King, very good, brother. So, first universal king, Babylon. You see? Next, uh, the arms and shoulder of, uh, you see? Silver, that represents? Medo Persia, two empires. Here it is showed in a bear. One shoulder up, one shoulder down. So, what does it mean? Shoulder always in the Bible means government. Isaiah 9 6. The government shall be upon Jesus' shoulder. Unto as a child is born, unto as a, you see, huh? a king is given. Upon him shall be. The government, upon each shoulder shall be huh? the kingship, the government, the government shall be upon each shoulder means shoulder means responsibility of the government. It was two empires that ruled, the Medians and the Persians. If you see in this one, the Persians were more, more powerful than the Medians. Therefore, they both ruled together. Okay? And why is compared to the bear? Bear is very dangerous animal. Even if you can escape from the lion, you can't escape from the bear. Because if you climb a tree, it will climb. If you go inside the sea, it will come inside there also. You run in the forest, you run on the land, it will come. The only way to escape from the bear is to lie dead. That means you need to surrender to made up Persians or else they won't leave at all. This is all given in the Bible. In the coming days, we're going to see all these things. God bless. Okay? Now, the third empire was the thigh and belly of brass. 
that is the Grecian Empire. Here it is compared to leopard. Leopard means cheetah, the fastest land huh? animal. First of all, cheetah is a leopard is faster. If you give wings for it, it will be super faster. So what does this represent, sir? You see, the Grecian Empire. Now, who is the first uh, king, emperor of Greece? Do anybody know? First emperor of Greece. Who knows? Nobody knows, sir. First Alexander emperor of Greece. Huh? Alexander the Great. Very good, Brother Ashish. Alexander the Great. So, so fast, at the age of 23 years, he was the world emperor. Imagine at the age of Brother Gopal. Huh? Brother Gopal is still studying. <laughs> but this is Alexander the Great was the world emperor. He had conquered the entire world, even India. This is such a young age. You know, one surprise with him that at the age of 32, he left the world also. <laughs> so short, 32 years. He said, dear brethren, so fast as a leopard. Super fast. What does the forehead signify? Forehead means the force, huh? centurions, the captains of his army. <laughs> the very floor, four close friends to Alexander the Great. Okay. And the fourth empire is the feet uh, and the legs of iron. That happens in the Roman Empire. Here it is come to a very ferocious uh, thing. Uh, there, uh, the iron was mixed with the clay. Here, that is shown differently. You see, the brethren, their uh, feet had ten fingers. Here, how many hands are there on the head? How many hands are there on the head? Tell me. How many hands were there on the head? Are you all listening? How many hands were there on the head of the beast? Hmm? How many hands? Ten hands. Very good. Ten hands. See? Now, what is the meaning of ten hands? For the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. Hear a little, hear a little. Search the scriptures. Let us read Daniel 7.24, brother. Shazan, brother, can you read Daniel 7.24? Brother Shazan, are you there? Can you read? Is it possible? Okay, can somebody else read Daniel 7.24? Okay, Shazan, brother, read, read, please, please continue, we'll wait. Oh, he can't read, okay, thank you. Anybody else? And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings mm -hmm. that shall arise, and another, another shall rise after them. Mm -hmm. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Uh -huh. See, beautifully it's given. The ten horns uh, are the ten kings. So horns in the Bible means kingdom, kingship, kings. So ten horns were on the beast means ten divisions of the Roman Empire. So there what happened? Between a small horn came which is the brethren. Because of which three horns fell. What does it mean? That means uh, this is a small growth of papacy. The Roman Catholic Empire. You see, because of which three horns were taken off by the roots means uh, that represents uh, the three small kingdoms that was uh, made way for the papacy's establishment. These were Heroli, Eastern Exarchate, and Ostrogoths. Anyway, the little horn, you see, the specialty of it, what does Daniel say? Read with her. Daniel 7, 8 with her. Huh? It had mouth of a man speaking great things and eyes of a man. Okay, now what is the meaning of it? Let us read Daniel. Uh, one minute. Daniel 7. Read verse 8 first, then uh, I'll tell you. Can anybody read? Daniel 7, 8. Then verse 25. Daniel 7, 8. Can anybody read? I considered the 
a horn and behold there came came up among among them another little little before whom before whom uh, there were three of the first horn plucked up by by the root and behold in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man and the mouth speaking great things mm, mouth speaking great things so what is the meaning of this one read verse 25 sister from the bible can anybody open from the bible and read verse 25 daniel 7 25 and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Ah, with the mouth, what did he do? He spoke great things. You see, great words against God himself. Then with the eyes, what did he do? He began to change the times. Dear brother, so what is the meaning of this one? If you see, the great paper system spoke so many false doctrines which were against God. You see, like for example, you see, go and confess all your sins to the Father. You see, commit all sorts of nonsense, sins and all, whatever you want. Then go and confess to the Father, if God will forgive us. Where does the Bible say? Huh? These are all undoctrinal, unscriptural doctrines. Then taking uh, offerings uh, and giving forgiveness of sins. Uh, you see, they claim that uh, uh, indulgences were uh, sold. That means uh, uh, if somebody sins, if they come and pay 10 rupees and take on ticket, that ticket will be a gateway for heaven. So all their sins will be forgiven just because of 10 rupees. And they'll be given a ticket where they can go directly to heaven, it seems. And some people who did not uh, believe in Christ and died, if they were suffering in hell, if 100 rupees were given, they would be given a ticket of transfer from hell to heaven, it seems. All these things were claimed by papacy. And uh, Pope claimed that in my left hand, there are curses. If I lift a left hand, immediately it will all be, you see, burned with fire. And uh, right hand, all blessings are there. If I just bless this one, you will all be receiving blessings. Sir. So, Pope would deceive the people, telling all these lies and all. And those days, the Bible itself was in a dead language. Nobody could read the Bible. It was not in normal language at all. So, anybody who touched the Bible, they were burned a stake. You see, they were brought before everybody. They were tied to a pole. And uh, they were put into fire alive. So that everybody may fear not to trust the Bible, dear brethren. So these all things happened in the papacy. They began to change the times and laws. You see, the Bible, what does the Bible say? Opposite only they did, dear brethren. So all these things ended when, when Napoleon Bonaparte, he arrested the Pope in France and shifted him jail to jail. He arrested and cupped his hands before everybody and tied it at the back, made him to, you see, uh, he paraded him in the entire city of France and transferred him from jail to jail. Ultimately, he died in the jail itself. When the people came to know that uh, what all papers he told is truly lies. Dear brethren, even today, the European nations are still existing as uh, mentioned in the Ten Hans. But this beast, the Roman Empire, the Catholic uh, paper system will totally be destroyed in very short time. How it will be destroyed? It says uh, his body shall be slain and given to fire. Now this is not literal fire, but this signifies the judgment of God. Read verse 26, brother. Read verse 26. But the judgment shall sit and thy shall they shall take away his dominion to consume and uh, 
and to destroy it unto the end. See, so put into fire means this is not not literal, because beast itself is not literal. That represents a kingdom. Similarly, fire always represents trials, uh, tribulations, difficulties. So in the judgment, uh, God shall destroy this uh, empire. There in Daniel we saw, no. Uh, a stone came and hit and later it became a mountain. So similar here, the empires will be destroyed and kingdom given to whom? Christ. Here see it, Daniel 7 chapter is beautifully given. Daniel read 7 chapter 13 and 14, brother. Can somebody read? Joel, brother, can you read? Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Joel, brother, can you read? Brother Joel, please. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of theirs, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom that all people, nation, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Destroyed. This kingdom shall never be destroyed. So one like a son of man came to the ancient of the Jesus coming to the heavenly father and receiving the kingdom. Now, what will Jesus do? See, kingdom is given to Jesus, his, his kingdom that is going to be established on earth. But uh, will he rule alone? No, the church also is going to rule with him. Read 727, brother. Read verse 27, brother. Anil, brother, can you read verse 27? Is it possible? And the kingdom of the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an ever everlasting kingdom, and all dominions, dominions shall serve and obey him. All dominions shall serve and obey him. So, the kingdom shall not only be given to Christ, but also to the saints of the Most High. It is Jesus along with the church who are going to rule, you see. Therefore, we always say there are two types of salvation. One is the heavenly salvation and the earthly salvation. For the heavenly salvation, Jesus and the church are in heavenly salvation. But who will be on the earth, on the earthly salvation? It is the people. Therefore, these saints, along with Jesus, are going to rule on the people on this earth, dear brethren. Therefore, dear brethren, this is the establishment of Christ's kingdom on this earth. As all these four emperors and empires were on earth, similarly, Christ's kingdom shall be on earth only. What? See? This mountain began to grow and cover the entire earth. The fifth universal empire. What did Jesus start us to pray? A father which art in heaven. Huh? Can anybody tell the prayer? Tell me. Can anybody tell, me, tell the prayer? A father which art in heaven? Hmm. You, nobody knows the Lord's prayer. Huh? Tell me. Who knows the Lord's prayer? Tell me. Only in Nepal. <laughs> oh, tell me in Nepal English, no problem. So, um, all, all the, I mean, like, whole prayer? Hmm. Only two uh, lines you tell me at least. This one I'll give you. Tell, tell us that. Hey, Hamra Pita. Hmm. Everybody tells uh, we will go to heaven. Bible says, no, heaven will come here. Huh? Your kingdom come. Raja Aos. Continue, sir. Sorgama just the sir. This day is pretty vima pura house. Puravas. Thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. If everybody go to heaven, what will happen to the earth? Who's will be done on earth when nobody is there? See, Jesus taught, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth. It will be done, dear brethren. This will be a real thing. This is going to be happening in the very, very near future. This is the kingdom which Jesus came and preached everywhere. Read Luke 4.43. Luke 4.43. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to all the cities also, for therefore, therefore am I sent. Therefore am I sent. I should preach the kingdom of God to all the cities. Dear brethren, but today we don't see any church preaching about the kingdom. Why? Why don't they preach about the kingdom? Our master came to this serve. He said, I am come only to preach about the kingdom. Because not many knew about the kingdom. This beautifully is given in Daniel, 2nd chapter, 7th chapter. Why it is not spoken in any churches? Why don't you tell that Christ's kingdom is going to shortly be established on earth? Nobody speaks about the kingdom. Dear brethren. dear brethren, this is a very, very important subject. Therefore, dear brethren, kindly go through the notes. Kindly go through the YouTube link. The Gopal will also do the revision on Saturday in Nepali language. Any doubts, any questions, please don't hesitate. Anything you can ask from the Bible, we will definitely answer all the questions from the Bible. Okay? When Lord bless these words. Anybody has got any questions? Anil Buddha, any questions, any doubts? No, brother. Okay. Uh, Kamal, brother, any doubts, any questions? No, no, brother. No, brother. Okay. Thank you, brother. Munna, brother. Sorry. Munna, sister. Munna, Munna, sister. Any questions, sister? No, brother. Thank you, sister. Okay. Romy, sister. No questions. Okay. Shazan, brother. Any questions you want to ask, you can ask. Okay. Joel, brother, has got exited. Okay. Um, 